Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. This is part three, the final part for today. Uh, Monday, December 3rd, 2012. I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com on YouTube, ddarko2013. All right, so we left off talking about how in the media they're, um, they're bringing the hero, the police, the hero uh, theme back. So as they know, the establishment knows that people are, uh, they don't trust the fraternal, uh, uh, fraternal order of police, the brotherhood. Um, that's been doing some pretty crazy stuff. Um, but then what, uh, also the lottery, I noticed. Uh, there have been, you know, the whole thing with the lottery so that a bunch of desperate people uh, can all believe that uh, anything could happen, right? So I left off with this. The dash cam video shows the Seattle cop brutally punching the suspect. It confirmed that an officer delivered a violent punch to a suspect's face in October when he was pinned to the hood of a car. Then the a man gets a ticket after running himself over pretty interesting goes on and says there that um, he managed to run himself over when the brakes on his pickup truck failed reports the Boston Globe Brian Reynolds tried to slow his truck by sticking out his foot and driving up a hill the result being that he fell out of the truck which proceeded to roll over his left leg luckily he suffered only minor minor injuries and the truck came to a stop after hitting a fire hydrant police rewarded his efforts with a $35 ticket for driving with defective equipment so, unbelievably, 61% uh, of readers thought that this story was, um, was uh, hilarious. I don't think it's, as, it's that funny, especially uh, when you get a ticket more than $35. He kind of got off uh, uh, pretty lightly with $35 ticket. He could have just got like a $150 ticket. That seems to be the uh, standard uh, uh, minimum for tickets now. Uh, we have this individual, this woman, uh, who's actually uh, handicapped, chronic spinal condition, and this cop, who uh, was basically not liking the fact that she was either ignoring or just didn't acknowledge or didn't see this cop uh, uh, basically trying to pull her over. So what did he do? He used the police tactic and flipped her car over. It's unbelievable. And the way the media covers it, you know, the, these headlines, St. Lucie County deputies maneuver flips car he was following driver questions tactic and arrest so it says aggress it's an aggressive traffic stop so it needs greater scrutiny so let's go check out and see what happened it goes on here and it says that um, her Ford expedition was total in the wreck she's thousands of dollars and her life has been turned upside down it goes it was on October 28th returning home and it says uh, that she had set her cruise control at 55, the posted speed limit, when she noticed a deputy's patrol car behind her. It says the deputy didn't have his lights or siren on. She noticed him come alongside her, uh, heard his siren, and everything went crazy. Her car left the road, rolled, and ended up on the driver's side with uh, uh, basically herself hanging upside down in her seatbelt. So it says here that she was slumped over the wheel, probably due to the, to up here it says that she walks double over and has a morphine pump surgically implanted in her spine to alleviate constant pain. It says that, um, that uh, she did not slow down from her consistent 57 miles per hour when he turned his blue lights on. So the police officer, a revenue collector who's watched too many cop movies, has in, uh, initiated a maneuver that's called precision immobilization technique, an aggressive technique used to stop fleeing vehicles by tapping the rear bumper, bumper and spinning them off the road. So the woman's uh, lawyer says here he spent 15 years in law enforcement and taught defensive driving techniques before becoming a lawyer, says that the use of this uh, uh, precision immobilization technique maneuver was unwarranted. And he says, why is this not called deadly force when it's used by a police officer? In, in a different article, it says here, the deputy wrote in his report that he was afraid for public safety because of construction zones that were four miles down the road. So she was charged with possession of a controlled substance for having four OxyContin uh, pills without prescription. So a lot of times you see bumper stickers with people uh, that uh, they're all about supporting the troops, which is nice and everything, but they don't understand that they're supporting uh, killing farmers in other countries that have really no beef and that they're no threat to you at all, and you're going to go ahead and drone bomb them or, or, or do searches and seizures and whatever, um, that that's somehow going to make you more free, that you're defending your freedom here in America by doing that, by supporting that. Um, it says here, nation must care for those who fought for our freedom. So they fought for our freedom.
to become more free. Like I said before, the, in every war, we actually we actually lose freedom, we become less free. Uh, it says here, veterans gun rights, a sticky issue with defense bill. And you have uh, Senator Chuck Schumer talking with uh, Senator Coburn. It says, should veterans deemed too mentally incompetent to handle their own financial affairs be prevented from buying a gun? So they're playing the left-right game as the Republican neocon has sought to amend the bill to stop the Veterans Affairs Department from putting their names of veterans deemed too mentally incompetent to handle their finances into a national instant criminal background check system which prohibits them from buying or owning firearms. Senator Chuck Schumer objected, saying the measure would make it easier for veterans with mental illnesses to own a gun, endangering themselves and the public. Now let's not forget that Chuck Schumer is a Zionist. And he was pushing the National ID card system. Then another thing is what? The NDAA, National Defense Authorization Act. Actually, the newest version of the bill makes it easier to detain citizens indefinitely. So it says here, at first glance, the new version uh, did more. looked like it did more to protect Americans against indefinite detention. It says, we and other news organizations repeated as much yesterday, but on a closer examination of the new bill, it actually makes it easier to detain citizens indefinitely. It says, here's the added clause in the question, nothing uh, that the AUMF or the 2012 NDAA shall be construed to deny the availability of writ of habeas corpus or to deny any constitutional rights in a court ordained or established by or under Article 3 of the Constitution for any person who is lawfully in the United States when detained pursuant to the bill who is otherwise entitled to such writ or such rights. Since yesterday, um, Business Insider focused on the line, nothing shall be construed to deny any constitutional rights, but today, after another interpretation from a lawyer, uh, from for the group of journalists and activists suing the government over the uh, National Defense Authorization Bill. It says he explained that the new provision gives U.S. citizens a right to go to civilian court based on any constitutional rights, but since there are no rules in place to exercise this right, detained U.S. citizens currently have no way to gain access to lawyers, family, or the court itself once they are detained within the military. It says also, the bill goes further when it says the new statute actually states that persons lawfully in the United States can be detained under the authorization for use of military force. So it says that the original bill never went that far. Therefore, under the guise of supposedly adding protection to Americans, the new statute actually expands the AUMF to civilians in the United States. It would allow the military to indefinitely detain anyone who commits belligerent acts or provides substantial support to the Taliban or Al-Qaeda or associated forces. The government can still black bag any America, American from the Lou Rockwell blog. It says the Senate passed the much Ballyhooed Feinstein Lee Amendment last night, which supposedly partially nullifies the provision of the Defense Authorization Act, allowing for Americans to be kidnapped by the government and disappear without any charges or due process. And controlled opposition, Senator Rand Paul put out a press release declaring victory. But uh, another senator, Congress, I'm sorry, Congressman Justin Amish, points out that the wording effectively codifies tyranny. It's a question: Why are there libertarians celebrating this passage when? Rather than making us more free, it, it really only further enshrines uh, the idea that the state grants and denies us our rights. Just like Chuck Schumer behind the uh, uh, taking guns from veterans, you have Diane Feinstein says, turn them over. She go, uh, moves to ban all assault rifles, high capacity magazines, and pistol grips. So this is pretty interesting. This is actually from November 7th, 2012. Um, and let's not forget that she's what? A Zionist. And remember, Zionists are fifth column in America. Israel or Israeli dual citizenship, Carl Levin, has suspended the civil rights of Americans in another step to establishing a Zionist Illuminati police state in the once land of the free. A cardinal technique of the fifth column is the infiltration of sympathizers into the fabric of society of the nation under attack, and particularly into positions of policy decision and national defense. Let's not forget uh, Bernanke. And Greenspan over at the Federal Reserve System because if you have the power to issue currency, you know, that's the most power you, you'll ever really need to run a country in the world. That was the Zionist Rothschild who actually said that. Hungry Jews protest over uh, this uh, MP's anti Zionist remarks. So the hungry Jews are back. 
and I've covered this before, so this is the backlash. Jewish and civic groups have staged a demonstration in the Hungarian capital, Budapest, to protest against a far-right far legislator's call to screen Jews as national security risks. That's right, because if you're, you're far-right, you're actually conservative. If you're far-left, you're actually progressive. But you, most people are usually in the middle because they're both the same. They don't stand for anything except for globalization, infiltration of your society and culture, destroying, your, destroying you, basically, in your lives, using you, sucking you like a vampire, all the life force from you. So the protesters on Sunday took part in a demonstration outside the parliament in Hungary days after this uh, lawmaker from a far-right uh, party triggered anger by calling for a list of Jews to be drawn up following a debate on the eight-day Israeli war in the Gaza Strip. It goes on and he said that it was time to assess how many people of Jewish origin there are here in the country and especially in the Hungarian parliament, it says who represent a certain national security risk. And like 90% of other people, he later apologized for his remarks but added that Hungary needed to be cautious of Zionist Israel and those serving uh, also from here. Interesting comment. Someone said if we did this here in America, we would have gotten rid of 90% of Congress. Congress retains low honesty rating. Only one in ten Americans rate the honesty and ethical standards of its members at a very high, uh, very high or high. This puts the lawmaking body second lowest on the list of 22 professions measured, higher only than a car salesman. Same thing with bankers. They've received a 37% honesty store, score in 2000 2006, but after the economic takeover, their perceived honesty plummeted to as low as 19% in 2009. Ex-Spy Chief says, get ready for a Cyber 9-11. Says, we've had our warning, right? A Cyber Pearl Harbor, a Cyber 9-11. That means a false flag attack. This is why they're pushing this. How U.S. military hopes to turn the tides of cyber war with Plan X. To reach out to the private sector to help upgrade its military force to better be prepared in the digital age. That's protect themselves from, from you, from activists or other people. Uh, it says here... But uh, you're wide open for your privacy. You don't have any privacies. It says here, access to private net phone use up by 20% without warrants. And this is in Australia. Ninth Circuit Court gives the okay for warrantless home video surveillance. It says, can law enforcement enter your house and use secret video camera to record intimate details? On Tuesday, the court unfortunately answered that question with yes. The Supreme Court also says it's okay to record revenue collectors in Illinois. And Facebook accused of a massive data grab with a service that automatically uploads your phone pictures. It says it will upload every single picture taken to the social network servers. It could use that data to build detailed databases of users' lives. That's your digital uh, uh, DNA, as they call it. Minnesota is developing GPS-based vehicle tracking systems intended to introduce a vehicle tax, which would entail a great deal of data constantly collected by the government and the whereabouts and everyday patterns of taxed vehicles. It says Vatican introduces a new security measure. It says here that the employees will be issued with RFID chips, tracking devices, to prevent a VataLeaks or WikiLeaks scandal again. I saw an article that actually tied the Vatican with Pablo Escobar as well. You always hear propaganda coming out of Pakistan and Afghanistan about women's rights. Well, how about Saudi Arabia, right? Saudi Arabia introduces electronic tracking of women. Males will automatically receive text messages whenever their spouses, relatives, daughters pass through travel checkpoints. A school district aims to ease concerns over an isolation booth. Wow, that looks really nice, doesn't it? So the school principal defended the padded room. Uh, is being used for students with behavioral disabilities. Kind of like shock treatment, they're actually referring to this as having a therapeutic. It's a thera therapeutic tool for students with special needs. But most of the complaints are not coming from the parents who volunteered. It's coming from other parents. That's right. It says actually some of the eight or nine kids go voluntarily inside. So parents that do this, I don't know what to say. I, I think you're, uh, you're horrible people. <laughs> Not only do you dump your kids in a re-education camp, but then you let them experiment on them. And uh, this is just another step in that direction. Shocking UK kids' arrest figures are revealed. It says more than 2,000 primary uh, school-age children have been detained across Britain in the last year. Makes an average of six per day. That's a big, big trend now, arresting students at school. Just getting them used to a life of crime. Kind of like how going to school and ringing the bell and ask permission when to go to the bathroom and all that. That's training them to be good consumers and good workers, employees getting up for the daily grind. In Texas, a teacher rewards program charges second graders 
bucks, Boyd bucks for bathroom breaks. Talk about social engineering. You need money for everything, including to piss. Honor roll student needed to go to the bathroom, but he sat down and peed in his pants because he didn't have any these Boyd bucks. Also, you have uh, private prison corrections, Corporation of America using drug sweeps of public school students. That's a condition for SWAT teams rating in which is why they're what 300 extra hours of brainwashing school in 2013 but first they should be tested for mental illnesses thank you